everyone, Howie Fisher from Fisher's Flies. Thanks for checking in as always. Today I'm going to be tying up one of my all-time favorite dry fly patterns. This is a pattern I like to call the Never Sink 2.0. Uh, this pattern is small but buoyant enough to hold up uh, some small droppers, even up to a 3.5 millimeter bead in the larger sizes. I'm tying this in a size 14 today with a fire hole 413. And for the thread I'm using UTC 70 denier and tan. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with my thread right behind the eye. And I'm going to take a couple wraps back to make sure my thread is good and then snip off my tag. For the flash on this, I'm using Mirage Tinsel Opal or Opal Mirage Tinsel in medium. And I'm going to cut off a piece that's large enough. I'm going to go ahead and secure this to the hook right where my tie-in is or right where my thread's hanging. And I'm going to wrap this back well into the bend. Um, I like to wind it or tie it back to about where it almost seems like this hook is starting to straighten back out again before it hooks curves for the hook. Then I'm going to bring my thread up about a uh, hook or an eye length behind the gap, the eye, and then I'm going to take overlapping or touching wraps with this tinsel forward to where my thread is hanging. And once I get it there, I'm just going to tie it off. I like to do two over top and then that backwards just to make sure it's not going anywhere. For the body on this fly I'm going to be using a piece of two millimeter foam in tan. Uh, you can do this in different colors. You can use dark brown for this color to have like a sedge body. Um, I've been using this on the dropper foam cutter. Super great 3D printed material or product. Uh, if you haven't checked out on the dropper check him out. He's got a bunch of great um, 3D printed material. So I've gone and cut a piece of um, foam to size and I'm just going to go ahead and secure that to the top of the hook. And to measure this body I like to make it from the tie-in point to the end of the body and then an extra length of that same length. Um, so it ends up being about the length of the hook uh, at the end. For the wing on this I'm using premium air yearling elk. Um, you can use uh, just regular elk or bull elk. I'm going to go ahead and take off a hefty chunk or healthy chunk. Um, remember, you always want to start with more than you think because you're going to pull out the shorts and the longs and the fuzzy fiber under fur. So go ahead and grab them by the tips. And if you flick uh, the butt ends of your, your clump, it loosens everything up a little bit and just allows you to, to pull out those shorter materials a little bit easier. As you can see, um, even after several times doing this, I'm still pulling out a decent amount of fur in, in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those in my stacker. And I like to stack on my knuckle, one, so uh, I'm not pounding on my desk, but two, also um, not to shake the camera while recording. Once I got there where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and line this up. I want these tips a little bit longer or a little bit past the end of my foam um, because the wings on a caddis, if you look at a real caddis, are longer than the body. Um, so the body itself is always shorter than the wings. Uh, I'm just going to wrap my thread forward through this, and then I'm going to snip off the butt ends as close as possible so that I don't get any crowding the, the hook eye or going over. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to tie in my dry fly hackle. So um, for this, with the, the hackle feather, there are two sides to it. There's a shiny side and a dull side. The shiny side or darker side, I'm going to start with it facing me uh, in my in my left hand. It'll be your right. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some fibers off the end. And again, with the shiny side facing me in my left hand, I'm going to take off a couple extra fibers from that top side. And what this is going to do is it's going to help me to wrap that hackle well uh, when I get to that point. So once I get that where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and just wrap it in. And I'm wrapping that hackle in, and this is important with the dull side facing the body of the fly. Again, this is important because it'll help you wrap the, the hackle piece a lot easier going forward. So, again, I wrapped it with the dull side so that that way it, it wraps the right way. Uh, it'll wrap with the fibers curving backwards so you're not getting too much of a crowded eye. I'm going to go ahead and wrap that to the eye and tie it off. The key with this pattern specifically, as most patterns, is um, you don't really need a whole lot of wraps on this fly because you have the foam to keep it afloat. 
So when you think you have the perfect amount, if you think you can do one more wrap, don't do it. Stop there and tie it off. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a couple whip finishes and uh, snip my thread off. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some UV resin. Um, you can also use um, some head cement if that's what you have. But just make sure you put something on there so that um, that head doesn't come undone. Um, so you don't lose all that great work. So again, this is the uh, what I call the NeverSync 2.0. Fantastic dry fly pattern uh, works year round. Thanks for checking out.